Now, in the middle of what seems to be one global crisis after another, we have a bright light to share with you today. A group of young female students from war-torn Afghanistan. They were facing dire odds when their international student visas were about to run out and a lifetime of oppression awaited them back home. So one of those students reached out over social media and that student, Habiba Nazari, is here now to tell us what happened next. And with her is Friba Rezegi. Friba is the head of Women Leaders of Tomorrow. And I'm so pleased you're both able to be with us today. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having, you having us. us. Habiba, let's start with you. How does it feel to, to be here in Canada? Like, uh, for me, it's a good opportunity because I can continue my education here. Uh, from the time I came to Canada, Vancouver, I started my grad program at UBC, University of British Columbia. And uh, as you know, what's going on in Afghanistan and what's happening there that women are banned from going to school for, or studying, and women are banned from working. So when I came here, I got this opportunity to continue my education and do whatever I want to do to achieve my goals. And this is a great opportunity for me to be here and continue my education. I see. So let's talk about reaching out on, on social media then when you thought, I have to go home, I have to go and face that with the Taliban in control? Uh, I was in Afghanistan in uh, July uh, 2022, that time that it was uh, the crisis was happening in Afghanistan, and I left Afghanistan only five days before the Taliban government. And when I went back to the Kazakhstan, and uh, I had one more year to study there, uh, by furnishing my study permit and my visa in Kazakhstan, I didn't have any hope. I was so hopeless. And I was thinking that if I go back to Afghanistan, what was happening to me was unacceptable for us because we couldn't continue our education, we couldn't continue our uh, studies. And uh, what uh, we were ac expecting in Afghanistan was so bad for us and it was not acceptable. Uh, from the time uh, I was a uh, alumni member of WLOT, Women Leaders of Tomorrow, and we reached out to them in order to in order to request for any cooperation from them because we were a group of 10 people that we were studying technical area of mining engineering in Kazakhstan. And uh, as a mining engineering is a technical field of study and we mm, were not able to study technical field of studies in Afghanistan back because uh, it was a male dominated field of study. And uh, by that time, when we reached out to WLOT, we got this opportunity to connect with UBC. And then we got a scholarship and 10 of us, a group of 10 people from Afghanistan that we used to study in Kazakhstan. We came to uh, Vancouver and we all started our program, our grad program in technical area. Yeah. Well, well, I know that that's quite a background already. And, and Freeba, what about your background? I mean, you're already um, a role model for, for young women in Afghanistan. You're an Olympian. T tell us about that experience. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I was born and raised in Afghanistan. And uh, in 2004, Afghanistan was getting ready to send a delegate and team of athletes to two 2004 Athens Olympic Games. And I was selected to represent Afghanistan. I was honored and it was a privilege. And uh, yeah, my participation at the 2004 Athens Olympic Games was also a sports revolution for a young generation, for women and girls in Afghanistan. They have joined different sports. And I always wanted to do something for, for Afghan women to empower them through education and sport. And uh, I chose education because education is very important and it's our basic human innate rights. And uh, I always believed, even as a child, and I still believe that Afghan women have talent, we are very, uh, was strong, we are smart, Afghan women are smart, but we always lack opportunities to thrive, to feel and reach our full potentials. I started Women Leaders of Tomorrow to create that opportunity and the platform for Afghan women so they can reach that uh, okay. full so, potential. So you see this, this message for help from Habibi and uh, Habiba, my, my apologies. Mm -hmm. um, what, what goes through your mind? What, how, how do you rally support? Um, the Afghanistan 
Central Republic government collapsed in August of 2021. I was devastated. I was devastated in, 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 uh, in Vancouver. I watched the government collapse live on Al Jazeera, live in my apartment in Vancouver. And um, I was in contact with many Afghan uh, girls. I received hundreds of desperate messages uh, asking me to help them leave the country and to, leave the, uh, to be able to escape Taliban's persecution. And um, in February of 2022, I received an email from Habiba's uh, cohort from Kazakhstan mentioning that they are in a dire situation, their visas are expiring, uh, they will not get renewal, and they can't go back to Afghanistan because there was no place for them. Had they gone to Afghanistan, it would have been a death wish for them. Also because they were all 10 Afghan women without any male guardian, which Taliban have imposed on them, no family members. So they would be immediately questioned by the Taliban guards at the Kabul International Airport and they would have been sent to prison. I did not see the future bright, but um, and then I rallied and I did whatever I could uh, within my contacts in Vancouver area to secure scholarships for them. Uh, at UBC and I reached out to UBC, I reached out to donors, I reached out to supporters. Everybody came together nice. to support 10 Afghan uh, women. And who are these other women? Are you in contact with them, Habiba? Uh, yeah, uh, like as I mentioned, we were 10 Afghan girls that we were studying in Kazakhstan uh, at the same university, at the same field of study. and. Uh, we are all right now here, UBC student, and we are doing our grad program in different field of study, but at all we are studying at Applied Science. Well, and, and what do you want to do with your future? Because it seems that you have a future. For sure I have. <laughs> like, yeah? As I have the opportunity right now to study and uh, continue my education after for, like graduating from UBC, what I want to do is just trying and working to you make an opportunity for Afghan women, mostly girls, that they want to study in technical area, but they cannot study in Afghanistan because it's a male-dominated field of study here, and they are not allowed to study technical areas. So I will make this opportunity for Afghan girl to continue their education in your desert field of study, and uh, helping them to you know, find some programs that they are eligible and they want to do that. A future um, for people who are watching right now. What can we do to help? There was an entire team behind the success of the 10 Afghan women. They also advocated for themselves. They uh, helped themselves. I just followed their leadership. I followed them what they wanted to do and I wanted to accommodate their uh, need. I am very honored and privileged to be able to work with them and to even know uh, these amazing 10 Afghan women. Um, whoever is uh, watching us, listening to us, um, this is, this project hasn't ended yet. We need support. Uh, we need support from donors. We need support from community members. We need support from uh, schools, uh, educational institutes in, in BC and all over Canada as well. What I want, I want the universities in Canada to mobilize, to design and start an initiative to support Afghan women's education and to put a focus uh, on the women's education in Afghanistan because Afghanistan is the only country presently that education is banned by, uh, by the Taliban for women. And when we say ta Taliban banned education, they did not only ban, they also have imposed strict punishment for women if they are caught or seen going to classrooms or if they are studying, especially modern studies, technology, science, math, literature. If they study, they will be punished. And the punishment that they have imposed or imprisonment, uh, flogging, actual flogging, and other uh, very strict uh, punishments. So we need to put Afghanistan and girls' education into our hearts and agenda in order to support them because there is no other way, there are no alternatives for Afghan women for education at the moment. It is so, <clears throat> excuse me, difficult for, for us to comprehend um, that level of, of oppression and uh, an actual violence uh, against women. But uh, thank you very much for, for being here today, for, for shining a light on this important issue, and, and all the best to you both. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much.